Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always with Big Show. Show, how are you, man? Doing all right. How about yourself? I'm doing good, too. Uh, coming off this long holiday weekend, I enjoyed it. Hate going back to work, but got to pay the bills. Yep, they definitely don't pay themselves. No, they do not. Um, Special episode of the podcast today. Uh <laughs> This is us. We're we're talking about ourselves uh, as we, you know, from various aspects of the podcast. But, so don't we always? <laughs> uh, that's true, but more so today. <laughs> um, but before we get into that, I, I want to go over some of, you know, the headlines from, you know, the last few days and just kind of get your your opinions on 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 some of them. Um, All right. I'm going to start off with uh, there's a woman on YouTube. Her name is uh, Taylor, no pun intended, uh, Alicia. And she's given a Christian perspective on Taylor Swift. Now, you and I have talked about Taylor Swift before. And I know with a lot of people, especially her fans, that goes in one ear and out the other. So I wanted to hear from a woman's perspective and not just a woman, a Christian woman. So I'm going to play this for you. It's about four minutes. And uh, okay. after she's done, I, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Sounds good. Hi, I'm outside. It's eight o'clock at night. Surprisingly, it is kind of bright outside. I um, was stuck on if I should make this video and I'm like, you know what, let me just, let me give my perspective on it. I know that a lot of people have done um, lyric breakdowns on Taylor Swift, on her music, uh, to see if it is Christian appropriate, to see if Christians should be listening to Taylor Swift. I was constantly making this video because I do know that Taylor Swift has a, which interests me too, that she has a very um, cult-like following, that if you say anything bad about Taylor Swift, uh, bad things are coming your way. <laughs> I've seen friendships ended uh, on social media. I've seen comment sections that somebody wouldn't be someone's friend because they didn't like Taylor Swift. Um, yeah, it's it's getting crazy out there with Taylor Swift. So I thought I would come on here and share my perspective because I've been following this stuff since I was like, what, 11 years old before I found Jesus. I've been so interested in the music industry and even before i believed in jesus i saw the wickedness and the dark stuff that was going on in the music industry and it was always so interesting to me me and my dad used to watch uh the beyonce music videos and like decode them and you know it was just it was all just a bunch of conspiracies at first you know like we're not for sure on this but it's really interesting you know and for me i just wonder how many interesting things <laughs> need to keep happening before it's like huh Okay, is something here? <laughs> because there's a lot of things. And I know there's a lot of allegations on Taylor Swift. I know that that, um, you know, some people are like, you believe that? Like, that's so far-fetched to believe that about her. But there's just so many things. And we just have uh, this awesome thing that I'm filming on right now called a cell phone. And it's so easy to do a quick Google search. It's so, I, I don't trust, never mind. Um, <laughs> be careful where you search because you're going to get fed different stuff wherever you go. Um, and, you know, I just feel like there is so much information out there right now to help you make that decision as a follower of Jesus. If you're watching this, you're not a follower of Jesus, you might be really confused. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Faith in Jesus comes by hearing. I wonder what else comes by hearing. I wonder... Uh, if the music we listen to matters more than we think. I really do. I don't know. I guess that's my perspective. Look deeper and, you know, obviously trust the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit. But there's just, there's just so much. There's so much that it's like, it really gets to a point of like, is this a coincidence now? I just feel like so many, so much wickedness is being exposed and you know what I also think, lastly, before I close this up, I think about who is the prince of this world. Do you guys know that Bible verse? The prince of this world is Satan himself. He's the prince of this world. 
this is his paradise. This is his world. That's why as Christians, this is not our home. I take comfort in that because this place is not the best. But I think about the fact that Satan is the prince of this world and he is in control of who is really going to be famous, who he's going to take care of. And it's those that are with him. And that might sound so far-fetched and crazy to you, but I really do look at it like that. Maybe that's just my perspective. But, you know, we see a lot of famous people that become famous that are doing a lot of things that are opposite to what the Word of God says. It's another one of those things that's like, how many times is it going to be a coincidence? How many times, like, just even looking at Billie Eilish, how she just rose to fame overnight and her music is so dark. She literally has music videos of her dropping down from the sky as Lucifer has a whole song dedicated to him mocking God calling God her it's another thing you'll start to see if you just keep looking deeper and ask God to open your eyes to these things like the fact that they literally slander God by calling God a woman Ariana Grande for instance God is a woman has a whole song dedicated on it was her first album where she truly blew up was her blaspheming God so there's just my neighbor just got home so I have to put the camera away but yeah that was um that's just my take I guess and uh, I hope you guys have a good night and God bless you and be careful what you listen to all right okay um from just a short video there's a lot that we can uh pack into it uh go ahead and give me your thoughts on that um I mean I would say she's not wrong per se um, you know, she raised that question about, you know, I wonder the things that we hear and we listen to are more important or than we give them credit for. And I would say most likely, yes, since we have two ears and one mouth, you know, mm -hmm. it's very important to listen. And, uh, you know, that's the easiest way to feed somebody a bunch of nonsense or feed them a bunch of truths. Um, she has a lot of, of, uh, same v views that I do when it comes to the music industry, but I also listen to the crappy ass music too. So I'm, I guess you could call me a hypocrite in that manner. Not necessarily hypocrite. Cause it's one thing to listen to it. It's another th thing to, you know, live it, you know, you know where I'm coming from. I mean, yes. I listen to Tupac. I'm not a gangster. Yeah, you, know? you are. Stop lying. <laughs> if I am, I'm very bad at it. Nah, you're very good at it. Nobody knows. See, I know the real you. Oh, if only that were the case. Uh, I know you got Glocks was... under, underneath the screen there. I got you. Hey. <laughs> Another thing that she touched on was, you know, how fast these people blow up, you know, and I'm sitting here thinking, you know, in that instant, I'm trying to live the right way. I'm trying to do the right thing. There's no way I'm going to reach that level of popularity because I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't get out here in the public eye and act a fool. Um, first thing that comes to mind, Diddy, you know, right after we talked about him, we had a podcast that we featured him after his house got raided and everything. What happens a couple weeks later? There's video on him, you know, beating an ex-girlfriend in the hallway of a hotel with a bathrobe on or a, yeah, a bath didn't. towel. Yeah. Chased her down. And, yeah. And, and, you know, great. He loses a few sponsors. His music is going upwards on, you know, whatever these Spotify's and all that. And, and I'm just scratching my head because I'm like, this crap don't make no sense. And this man is still walking around on his properties like ain't nothing going on. He literally buys his way out of all this trouble that he's getting in. And, and you know, he wants to put a fake apology on, 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 the, on the screen. By the way, didn't apologize to Cassie personally, just apologizing to his fans. Right. I mean... Let's use R. Kelly as, as an example. Mm -hmm. How how many times was he arrested and went to trial and didn't get convicted? I mean, quite a few times mm -hmm. before 
the justice, you know, the the justice shoe dropped, so to speak. I right. don't think Diddy's getting away with anything. Um, I think the people in charge are are uh, putting together a case that you know we'll see in the next year, maybe two, maybe three. Um, that he'll get his his doings to him, and, and I hope that case is airtight. But I won't. I want to go back to what you said. Um, you had said that, you know, you wouldn't, you you don't think that you would be able to blow up that big because you don't live that lifestyle. Something of that nature is what you yeah. just said, right? Yeah. Blow up that fast. I mean, in the same aspect that I believe Satan, quote unquote, blesses people, God does the same thing. Yes. And it just doesn't necessarily look the same. I feel you. And with that being said, let's use Beyonce as an example. Mm -hmm. Go back to when she first started out when she was the lead singer in Destiny's Child. Yes. The group was big, but they weren't that big. No. No, they were not. They, I mean, they weren't, you know, Beatles big. You know, I would I would say that she has she has probably put herself in that upper echelon with nowadays uh, in the fame aspect of the Beatles, Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, uh, Prince, those types of guys. Not saying she's talented like those people, but her fame is in that same category. However, that didn't escalate and and blow up until. She started adopting different views, like you said. Yeah. And that's where I think um, that young lady has a valid point. I mean, as long as we are faith believers know that Lucifer was the angel of music, his main communication stream will be through music. Period. It's, it's 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 his way that he can actually get into our subconscious without us realizing that's that's what's happening. Very very true. In my humble opinion. All right, I appreciate your humble opinion. Keeping with your opinion, uh, as we wind down the month of May, June fourth, uh, a new Star Wars TV show is coming to Disney Plus: The Acolyte. Uh, are oh you really? Is it that close? At all? Uh -huh. Is it that close? I didn't realize. Oh heck yeah! Oh, uh, oh episodes oh, yeah. one and two drop June fourth. Oh yeah, this might be something like where I told you I was going to be when Ahsoka, where I'm going to let them all play out, and then we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. Now this might be a weekly. We need to talk about the show like we did Ahsoka. I, okay. I don't think I'm going to be able to hold out for the eight to ten episodes that's supposed to happen or whatever. I'm actually I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I I am as well. For two reasons. Um, now, before we go any further, because I'm not for sure, where in the Star Wars timeline does this take place? This is the Old Republic days. This is when the Jedi were just getting to their height uh, long before so this, Yoda, Windu, all that. So this is multiple Sis, multiple Jedis. Uh, I don't believe the Sith had come yet. I think this is the rise of the Sith. So don't quote me on it because I'm not 100% sure. So I'm curious what timeline they're working with. They're doing canon or or the other one. Oh, well, that's the other thing. Because I, just like is... dark and light, you know, dark and, and, and light, mm -hmm. the Jedi and the Sith were basically born at the same time. Mm. And the in the old timeline, and I forget if it's canon or whatever, uh, there were multiple Siths, and the person that changed that was Bane. I do remember that he created the rule of two. A but master before and an that, apprentice. Yeah. yeah. But before he got to that ability, he was actually a, I guess you would say, a Padawan in this in in a Sith school, like the Jedi camp, you know, a Jedi temple. It was a Sith temple, and that's where he learned all of his stuff, and he he ended up 
uh, killing all the other Sis besides himself and took one apprentice. Very, very interesting. And what am I looking at here? Cause... But yes, I'm very interested in that in that show. Because June 4th just happens to be our next recording date. So we won't be able to talk about the show until the one after that. That sucks. But that'll just be our final reminder. We'll be like, hurry up and do this podcast so I can go watch Star Wars. Right. But yeah, I'm 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 gonna be looking forward to that too, especially knowing that two episodes drop. And I have heard one last thing before I go to the next subject. The people that have seen the the first four episodes, because you know, some people are lucky like that. Uh, the first four episodes have all been high praised across the board, but I'm hearing one interesting thing. Overall, out of the first four, episode three is the bomb diggity. So whatever builds up for us on that first night, we're in for a treat right after that. Excellent. That's all I can say about that, because unfortunately, that's all I know. I wasn't one of those lucky people. Disney, pick me. Pick me. I'm just hoping that it's not like, you know, the series is that I couldn't finish, you know, like She-Hulk. You had to bring that nightmare up. I'm just saying, it I think I only got so through. much potential and went. I think I only nowhere. got through like five episodes, maybe. Maybe. You, you saved yourself. Just put it that way. This is what I've heard. They they could have did so much with that that they just ran so, out the ground. And obviously, this isn't a spoiler alert because it's been out for a year or so, but you watched all the episodes, right? Of She Hulk? Uh huh. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, wasn't Scar introduced at the very end of it yes okay which so, really irritates me because they haven't even had world war hulk yet exactly and and, and scar was not the i mean he was the son of the hulk but not the smart hulk exactly so so that's yeah um there there's a lot that went wrong with that show i wonder if I've heard that they were doing a Hulk movie and and it they were supposed still... to be bringing in kind of like how they did the last Spider-Man movie where they had the three original Spider-Man and the, you know, different multiverses come into the movie. They're doing that same thing with Mark Ruffalo and Ed Norton and then the first guy. I haven't heard that yet. I have heard that they are in talks of doing a World War Hulk movie. However... Um, it's going to be dependent on Thunderbolts next year because Harrison Ford is playing Thunderbolt Ross and he Who's will be the Red, Red Hulk. Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. And if all goes well, they can parlay that into a Hulk movie. But I thought World War Hulk was a world of nothing but Hulks in a different universe. I thought that was the Hulk just went into full on berserker mode and was destroying the earth. And they had the, the Avengers had a plan to, you know, send him back to, uh, that, that planet I, that he was on. I, I'm, I, I could be mistaken, but I'm thinking I'd have to go look at all my comic books, but I'm pretty sure that the world war Hulk is an actual world full of Hulks. Because that's where you learn about, I forget his name, but the old dude with the beard. Maestro. Yeah, Maestro. You find him in that one. And okay. actually, Ragnarok, um, that whole getup was what World War Hope was supposed to look like. Yeah. Um, I wish they hadn't put that in a Ragnarok because that, that threw out everything that we, you know, I mean, they could obviously send him back, but I don't know. There, there yeah, was just so much more to that story. I'm just curious how Smart Hulk is going to go backwards. Now, here's the thing that I, here's my theory before we close this one out. All right, you know, on She Hulk, because you saw the first few episodes at least, she was able to retain herself. What if. Mark Ruffalo's character, Banner, doesn't know it, but he suffers from split personality disorder. That, like Moon Knight? Yeah, that can be how 
you can write it up so that you know you have banner and you have hulk right something, but the difference something can in that, happen to trigger hulk again but the difference in that was she hulk she got her powers through blood mm -hmm. which was different than how banner got his yeah but even abomination is able to retain his you know knowledge and his sense of self abomination didn't get his through i mean he got through gamma but he also got yeah, it because he he, he took yeah, the he super was, soldiers in there you're serum. right you're right you're right dang so so there were different there were different aspects to it but see like in the comic books how smart hulk came about he was he was as smart as banner but strong as the hulk and he was much bigger than the movie portrayed him as mm -hmm. but but it originally happened was there was a split in Banner's brain in his head and there was a gray Hulk and a green Hulk mm -hmm. and they were fighting inside of Banner's head and he was at his physical body was in a coma and all this was happening and to save Banner's physical body they merged which turned his physical body into the Hulk that had the brain of Banner. That's how the comic books did it. Or one of the comic books did it. I like that. But I don't know, like, because there's so many versions of Hulk. I mean, you have Red Hulk, you have Grey Hulk, you know, and Grey Hulk was, I mean, comic book fans, the original Hulk was Grey. Yes. The only reason why they changed it to green is because it didn't, you know, the printer couldn't print it out right, and some parts of the Grey were black, and so they changed it to green. I uh, do remember that. But, um, yeah, so he's a character that needs more, you know, I don't need no more Hawkeye. I don't need no more, and I, it might be on this, I don't need no more Black Widow. I don't need no more. Well, we won't get any more Black Widow. She's dead, so we're good there. She's only dead in one universe. Mm, good point. Uh, uh, you know, I don't need any more. Captain America and the Winter Soldier crap. You know what I mean? We need more Black Panther because there's only been two movies. We need more um, uh, Hulk. We need more now, of these outside characters. In Marvel's defense. I mean, and Captain Marvel, defense, we definitely don't need none of that no, no more. No, we don't need no more of that. In Marvel's defense, up until a few years ago, they could not do everything they wanted to do with the Hulk because Universal owned the rights still. The rights have reverted back. Marvel has the rights to the Hulk. They can do a Hulk movie now if they want to. So it's it, it, so it, they could only do it if it was an Avenger movie. He could be a guest. You know how Spider Man was like a guest in the MCU. That was the Hulk too. Spider Man is on loan from Sony. The Hulk was on loan from Universal, because long ago those two companies bought the rights from Marvel Comics. Now, Sony still has the rights to uh, Spider-Man, but because of negotiations and things of that nature, uh, he's been in more and more movies, and he can be in, you know, solo movies. But aren't there, I mean, so like just the entire character, because you have the amazing Spider-Man, which is uh, not Mark McGuire, not McGuire, but the other guy that played him. The oh, one that fought, elect, you know, yeah, Electro. Yeah, it's, and... it's the actual comic book character, so. Okay. Even though there's different comics that have him under different names, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, just under Spider-Man, the big umbrella. That, uh, someone what I would him. also like to see them introduce, and I, they've done it, the cartoon version of it, but. What I would really like to would like to see was a live action version of, of Spider Man twenty ninety nine. That wouldn't be bad. I, I I think and introduce live action Miles. That uh, I heard is kind of in the works, but we still have to wait yeah. because Sony has one more Miles Morales movie into the Spider Verse Part Three or Two or whatever. Yeah, but it's all, I don't I can't stand them cartoons, man. 
I can't. I it's, cannot it's get into them. It just must be my age. I cannot do it. Like my son has been hyping up this X Men '97 thing. Said, Dad, you bro. really like it? Blah blah bro. blah. I watched bro. the first episode and was like, "Ugh, no, you got to get past the first episode." The first episode is kind of a bridge between that '80s cartoon and now. By the time you get to episode four, you're gonna be like, "I can't put this down." X Men '97 is the bomb. I just can't get that in the cartoons, man. I try. <laughs> I try. I'll give it another shot, but I couldn't. I was like, hey, "Ugh, this is like watching paint dry." I understand it's animated, I'm, but it's not like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's this. No, this, but you know, this say, has got an edge to it now. I guess the difference in animation, if they did it like, um, and I, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, the Clone War type animation either, but it's tolerable. Mm-hmm. But if they were to do it kind of like how they do it in video games. That type of animation, yeah, or and, how they and did I think it the in only Toy Story. Why they didn't do that for X Men ninety seven because it's literally a continuation of the nineteen ninety five series. So, no, I get that, but I mean, a lot of these cartoons are out there. If they would do it kind of like Pixar does theirs, mm-hmm. it'd be different. It's a little bit more realistic looking, three D, still animation, but anyway, I went off on my soapbox there. Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. So, uh, you know, we, we love our sports, especially the National Football League. A couple things I want your opinion on. You know, Dak right. Prescott is holding out. <laughs> but Dak decided to come in front of people and say, you know what? I'm not motivated by money. I don't play for the money. Okay, Dak, why are you holding out then? So, well, you ain't playing to win championships because you ain't done that either. <laughs> he won a playoff game yet. <laughs> Has okay, he not he won did, one he, playoff he won, game? He won one playoff game and then got waxed the following week. So Because he got to – didn't they get to the NFC Championship or no? No, the Cowboys haven't been to the NFC Championship in quite some time. The divisional round is where he got bounced. I thought – okay. I thought the year that he took over for Romo. Mm, no, the year he took over for Romo, wasn't that the year that uh, – because Ezekiel Elliott went off that year, too. I, I think the Saints blasted them in the divisional round. I'm, I'm not a Cowboys fan, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I, I'm scratching my head on that because I'm like, Dak, if you don't, if you don't play for money, sign a $50 contract and get your ass on that field. Because all this is going to do is mess up your team. When your quarterback's not out there for the OTAs, it puts you back. Yeah. And Trey Lance is not the answer. We don't know. He hasn't really been given a shot. Well, he he's, he's actually in the OTAs, so. I mean, I know he's the backup, but you never know. He could be. Um... And, and let's say, let's say he is, for example. Then that puts Dak in a bad spot. Because if, yeah, Dak, if Jerry Jones Dak says, be, you know what, we'll move forward. Dak will be playing for the commanders. Mm. Freedom of speech. Just watch what you say. True that. Uh, also in the news, and we didn't touch on it last week because we were off. But I want to talk to you about it this week because I saw an article. Um, your boy Trav got booed at uh, one of the NBA games. He was out there with my homie. And it's because he supported his guy, Butker, after that stupid speech that he gave. So I guess I got See, a dual this, question for you. I, I want, this is I want where we're going to disagree. I want you to talk about the speech. And then I want you to tell me, should Travis have been booed since he spoke out and said that he supports his teammate? Because Mahomes wasn't booed. Did Mahomes say the same thing? No. Mahomes said he doesn't agree with everything that was said, but still backs Harrison Buckers. Okay. He, but he said, I don't agree with everything that he said. That's probably different. And I don't, I didn't hear what Travis had to say. I just seen that 
the Mahomes thing. Uh, just happened to see it in one of my in one of my feeds. Uh, I, and I think Travis is getting booed for multiple reasons, and fifty five percent of them is Taylor Swift. <laughs> just yeah. saying. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. So, but you sure you want to tackle this Butker conversation? Yeah, I mean, you know, I want to hear your take on it. Well, I want to hear your take first. You said that it was a stupid speech. Why do you call it a stupid speech? Okay. What did he say that was stupid? Do, do you say that a woman belongs in the home in this day and that's age? Not, that's not what he said. What, what was his exact phrasing? Did you so? I, so my next question is: Did you watch the speech? It's twenty I didn't minutes watch long. The speech. I did not watch so the you, speech. So your viewpoint is just what you heard everybody else's interpretation was. Apparently so. Okay. I would suggest mm -hmm. listening to the speech. It's twenty minutes long. But what people in my and here's my opinion: what people don't are not taking into consideration. Is who his audience was. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you or I may not actually agree with what is said. I'm going to stop. I'm going to pause on a him and I will go to another speaker. You know, it, pick a speaker. I don't care who it is. Um, you know, if you were talking to, Let's go Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey when they were doing the thing, same thing in Cincinnati's graduation. Okay. They chugged a beer and they were cheered, you know, but, it, you know, consider who they were in front of when they did it. It was accepted by who they were in front of. You may not agree with chugging a beer on stage and, and partying like that. You know what I mean? So Butker spoke his Catholic values and views in front of a Catholic audience at a Catholic college graduation where 99.9% .9 of those people sitting in that audience had the same beliefs and values that Butker did. Butker not once said in his speech that women belong in the home. What he did say is that his wife's greatest joy is being a homemaker and that's coming from his wife's own words. Okay. He didn't say that every woman should be that way. He did say that every woman should go out and get their career or do what they want to do. But he believes that their greatest joy will be being a wife and a mother. That that would be the greatest achievement in life. That's, that's what his view is. What's so wrong about that statement? When you put it in context like that, I don't find fault in that statement. And and that's where people are kind of twisted and saying, well, he was saying women should stay barefoot and pregnant and blah, 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 blah. And that's not what he said. He he basically spilled out his religious, moral, and spiritual views for 20 minutes. Okay. Which so is no different than you and I doing the same thing on our podcast and people disagree with what we say. Okay, let's take it to another notch then. Keeping it in that context, just the way you explained it. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I, I hear you. All right. Let's say there's another person who wants to speak out against social injustice and violence. Okay. okay. But that person gets blackballed. So are you speaking of the quarterback, Kaepernick? Yeah, yeah, I'm just comparing the two. Okay. The difference is, in my opinion, mm -hmm. Kaepernick made NFL the enemy. Bucker didn't. Just ah, because okay. Bucker plays in the NFL doesn't mean it's the same thing. Right. I, I'm just getting your opinion on this. So how well, I agree how, with how you did because Colin that's... how did Colin make the NFL the enemy? I, I, he, I see where you're going, but I just want you to explain he it public, to people that are listening. Didn't he publicly speak out against the NFL and the way that they treat minorities and that that it shouldn't be wrong for him to kneel and all that good stuff, you know, that he mm -hmm. shouldn't be made? I mean, he, Right. 
I agree with everything that Kaepernick said, but he made the NFL the enemy. So the NFL then in turn fought back and treated him the way he was treated. I don't agree with it because I think the one of the most biggest signs of respect is taking a knee. You know, if somebody gets hurt on the field, what's the first thing the players do on the field? Take a Take knee. Take a knee. You know, I mean, how, how is that disrespectful to the guy that's injured versus not, you know, taking a knee during the national anthem. And why do we have to stand and put our heart hands over our hearts and take our hats off during the national anthem? Why is that a rule? I mean, that's a suggestion. It's it's yeah, no different. I've... It's no different to me than being in church and they saying, "Okay, bow your head and close your eyes to pray." Why? God's going to listen to me whether my eyes are open or not. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So that's where I have the difference. But what yeah, Parker's speech I, I, and, and I agree with you 100% on that are 100% apples and oranges. Now, I am going to eventually, you know, probably sometime after we tape this podcast, go listen to his entire speech. Because I can't have an opinion one way or another without having full knowledge of everything, full disclosure. I will say this on the Kaepernick thing, though. I can't stand it when people still say, oh, I still don't watch the NFL because people still take knees. I have people that I grew up with that were in the military that said, we fought for this country so you could do what you want to do. I exactly. have no problem with people taking a knee. Would you rather them handle things in a violent manner? No. So, you know, if, if it offends you for somebody to, you know, take a knee instead of stand up straight, then you've got some problems with your values that you need to check out. And that whole taking the knee thing to me too also goes back to, is that only when you're at a live game? Mm. I mean, because I know when the game comes on, I'll just use Super Bowl, for example. Mm -hmm. And you always get to see the national anthem at the Super Bowl. Yeah. I don't get off my couch and and stand up and put my hand over my heart. And I Does guarantee that make me less American. 99999 percent of those people that are saying negative stuff about it, they don't get off the couch either. Exactly. Exactly. I think social media and the people that disagree with what Budker said, which is totally fine, mm -hmm. has blown this way out of proportion. It was, it's no different than okay, pause. Let's just say that you did watch it and you completely disagree with what Butker's point of view is. Does that make his point of view wrong? No. Exactly. And that's where the problem lies in this whole situation. It would be no different than the grand poobah of the Ku Klux Klan having a rally and speaking his mind. Okay. Is his point of view wrong not necessarily it's wrong to us because we disagree with it right yeah and, and that's but where i'm going with this whole harrison Butler thing is it more because we live in the age of cancel culture we do oh yeah had he Most made that definitely. speech 15 years ago it wouldn't have even made headlines right but they're trying to cancel him as because he that's where my problem is. It's not like he was said this after a football game mm -hmm. where it was a shotgun message to where everybody could hear it. It was a secluded event that somebody posted online. Well, actually, I believe the college posted online because they were proud of what he said, being a Catholic college, okay, that they was proud of what he said. And so they wanted to, to uplift or praise Bunker or whatever. And the people on social media seen it and had some sort of opinion about it. Mm -hmm. If if we didn't have social media, none of this would even be an issue. True. Because we wouldn't know about it. We'd just heard about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But teach their own. I mean, if he really does believe that women should be homemakers and stay at home and be wives and mothers, okay, that's your opinion. 
also he's a multimillionaire, so yeah, his wife can afford to stay home too. So I mean, I don't know about well, it. I mean, he's a he's a kicker, so I don't know how many multis of millions he's got, but you know, two, two is saying, multi, two is multi, true, so you know. True. But it's it's this age old question, and I asked one of my uh, my my church guys or church friends, my buddy. Um, I asked him this question. And I'll ponder to you. You don't have to answer. You can think about it. And the people that are watching, they can think about it. But as true faith believers, okay, Uh Christians must believe pro-choice. I'm sorry, pro-life. Pro-life, yeah, okay, pro-life. Must believe in that, right? That's, That's what people say. You're not a Christian if you... If you believe in abortion is okay, right? That's the common denominator that people say. But can you be a Christian and believe in capital punishment? Yeah. Why? What's the difference? You're still killing oh, I see. Somebody. I see what you're saying, yeah. Um, so if I can't be a Christian... I can think of is... Uh, to the unborn child who has not done anything in this world and you're ceasing them to exist before beforehand capital punishment would be going towards someone who has done something against the system that warrants uh, and i'm just you, you're, throwing stuff no, out there it. yeah i get it now what you're doing is justifying your belief mm-hmm. okay let's take the bible let's take the ten commandments does it say thou shalt not kill unless? No, there is a period after that. Thou shall not kill. Right. So if it's not okay to kill a, a baby in the womb, mm-hmm. how is it okay to kill somebody that's already here? That's where I, and you know, and I, I know we have Christian people that watch the show. You know, I would be interested in having a broader conversation with more faith believers, mm-hmm. and maybe we can have a show on that particular question. But I actually, this guy that I talked to, that I asked this question to, um, he basically did the same thing. He came off with, you know, well, you know, blah, 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 his points of view of it and kind of give it, justifying that, yes, it's okay to do both or whatever. And I told him the same thing where well, you're just justifying your belief, but you're not. Because, again, I ask the same question. Does the Bible say thou shalt not kill unless you did something wrong? <laughs> you know, uh, thou shalt not kill unless you're not born. I mean, it doesn't say that. You no, know? it does not. Um, and he actually thanked me. And he's he's in the uh, uh, seminary. Mm-hmm. He's studying to be, be a preacher. He said he actually thanked me. He said, this is a great point of view that's going to make me have to readjust my beliefs and my thoughts on the whole subject of it. And I appreciate you actually asking that question because when I have a really uh, hard faith based question, I always go to this cat because he's, he's pretty straightforward with me. Yeah. Um, So, but you know, that's, it's, it's one of those questions that now if somebody kicks in my front door, am I going to hesitate to take their life? Nope. Because I always believe my front door is locked, not for my safety, but for yours. Mm-hmm. If you decide to come into my home, there's different, you know, but the Bible doesn't say thou shalt not kill unless somebody kicks in your front door. I would still be in the wrong. Yeah. But at I that mean, point, I just ready to be judged. You know what I'm you're saying? You're not murdering in cold blood at that point. You are. The Bible doesn't say thou shalt not kill in cold blood. I know. It says thou shalt not kill. Period. And, and you will have killed. You will ask, I would hope, and seek forgiveness from God. And at that point, it's done. Oh, you I agree. What you had to do. Oh, no, I definitely and God agree. being God knows that you did what you had to do because it was either going to be him or you. But what's the difference in a young lady who's been beaten and raped, got pregnant, can't afford a baby? Um, and decides to terminate the, the pregnancy. And, she did what she had to do. That's where I'm going with that. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on that. That's her right. Um, whether we believe it's right or wrong, 
it's still the emphasis is on her. What but see, now believe. you're talking legalities. I'm talking strictly faith believing. Oh, no. When I say her right, I don't mean rights as in civil rights. I mean her right under her faith. But the she Bible doesn't do, say that. She can do what she feels she needs to do. But the Bible she's got to answer that. to it. I know, but True. she's got to answer but, to it. Right. And, I mean, we all have to answer for our sins. I get that. But the Bible mm -hmm. doesn't say you do what you feel is right. <laughs> You know, <laughs> oh, that would open a lot of doors the wrong way, yeah, right. But yeah, hey, you know, jot this subject down. Maybe we can have a conversation with some people. I, I would like to bring some people in on that. Some, some real tough questions, yes. All right, um, really quick, uh, before we get out of here, I, I want to go over, you know, because a lot of people don't know what all we do, they just see us in here for 30 45 minutes an hour every week but you know a lot goes into it a, a lot you know obviously there's stages there's the planning stage um i might come up with a topic you come up with a topic we we put our heads together during the week hey i want to talk about this all right let's talk about that and, and we get that together so you know we don't just come into it blindly uh, we have our topics, we, we have our points, just as we've done today. Uh, then we take it to another level, you know, because we're on camera, can't afford to be camera shy. Hey, I'm talking to you, Ricky. I'm talking to you, Big Show. You know, we do we do what we do there. It, it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there, kids. Uh, as the producer, I've got to take said podcast and, you know, there's a few edits, you know, there'll be some titles. You'll see that great website down there, or you'll see the uh, email address. Hopefully you guys will use it. Send us some information. Um, that thing on there that says like, share, subscribe, if you're a YouTube person. Uh, and, and all these things are put together, including the music at the beginning, music at the end, all the graphics. Then it's saved. Then it's ready for YouTube for all you guys that are listening on the podcast feed I have to also record an audio version of this which is you know one of the simplest things it just records the video version you just don't get to see everything um, and that goes to our podcast hosting site which goes out to all I think there's nine or ten um, podcast feeds that we're on. Uh, you guys check those out. If we're not on your podcast feed, let us know and we'll we'll get it on there. Um, once that is done, then I can breathe a sigh of relief and say, hey, everybody has it. I usually, we record on a Tuesday. I edit on Wednesday and the podcast comes out every Thursday morning. So that's that's what goes into it. So I've probably oversimplified a lot of it, but I just wanted to say that in letting you guys know that we do put a lot of work into it and we are trying to uh, make this little channel that could uh, go, go farther, faster, higher. Um, I saw that we had gained another subscriber this morning. Happy about that. So if you guys are on YouTube, subscribe. If you never, ever, ever, ever intend to watch an episode on YouTube, subscribe anyway. That'll just make our numbers look better. <laughs> but uh, interaction will always be a good thing. Whether you uh, comment or just hit the like button, it lets the YouTube gods out there know, hey, this is something that's, you know, worth spreading out to others because YouTube, YouTube won't suggest your video to other people unless it falls into that person's algorithm. Is it something they're right. going to like? Is it something they're going to want to hear or see? So the more we get from the public, the more we can put ourselves out there. We could make a thousand episodes, but if the same 50 people watch, nothing grows if you spread the word we grow 
So I am asking that you guys really hit that like button, share the video, or um, leave a comment. And if you're on any of our podcast feeds, those feeds, you can do the same thing. Uh, they all have something where you can put a like or a star, depending on your feed. Or uh, you can comment on a lot of them. And you can share it, too. There are ways to do that. I know Apple Podcasts has that. Uh, Spotify has that. So we're, we're, we're going to, we're, we're trying our best to, you know, to blow up. So we just ask you guys to help us out there. Share it with a friend, a neighbor, a neighbor's friend, a friend's neighbor. I don't care. Uh, just let them know that Rick and Big Show are uh, coming to your homes every Thursday. And we're talking about something. It could be something deep. It could be something crazy. It could be a blend of it, like the stuff we did today. So, you know, be sure and join us and tell everybody about us. And, you know, now I'm going to, you know, stop this self-advertising. And I'd say the name says it all. Yes. Slightly warped. And, and I just want to add to mm -hmm. some of the other stuff that we do to make this, you know, you, you've eloquently laid out everything that you do on your side. Mm -hmm. What I do is I just sit here and look pretty. He, you know, we, we, we know the subject, do a little in my video, but you know, I make, it's kind of like that line on men in black, you know, the difference is, is I make this shit look good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, if he's the yin, I'm the yang folks. I, I'm going <laughs> to leave it at that. Hey, another good one show. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Take us on out of here. And we will be back with y'all uh, next week. Well, just to reiterate, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, hit that little bell. Uh, and that way it'll notify you when we do post things. And uh, yeah, appreciate you guys coming in. Listen, listen, evening and, uh, you know, grab somebody, tell them you love them. Tomorrow is not promised. See you next week. Good Lord willing. Hey guys. <laughs>